All right, today let's talk about junction objects, where to find them, how to build them, what they're good for, and all that fun stuff. One of the things that I often hear is where do I find these junction objects? I hear there's something with many-to-many -many relationships. When I go into setup, I can't find them. So what are these things? Well, it turns out that junction objects are actually a data architecture pattern that Salesforce allows you to build. And it's really just um, something that you could really build with any database. But this allows us to create many-to-many -many relationships using the lookup and master detail relationship type fields. So we'll talk a little bit about how to build those and when you want to build them as opposed to just building individual fields to create some kind of limited one-to-many relationships. So the first thing we'll do is see where in Salesforce do we see this out of the box? Um, and that'll help us understand maybe where we should be building them. So let's go to the whiteboard for a minute. And let's take a, an example right from Salesforce. We'll actually use something called the opportunity contact role. And first let's build out the schema diagram. So we all know that we have account and we have opportunity. And we have a lookup from the opportunity to the account. This gives us a one-to-many relationship. One account can have many opportunities. We might also put a one and an N over here, N meaning many. We also have here a relationship, a similar relationship between account and contact. Again, one account can have many contacts. These are things we should all basically be familiar with at this point. And we get this relationship because of the lookup field. And remember, the lookup field is always on the child object. The opportunity has a lookup to account, the contact has a lookup to account, and the lookup is what gives us that one to many. So just remember, it's the child that actually describes the relationship, not the parent, because the lookup field is on the child, not on on the parent. The parent becomes the parent because the child declares it. Um, now we run into a problem here when we say, well, you know, on this opportunity, um, I may deal with another account. So maybe I have the customer, but maybe I have some like preferred, preferred vendor or reseller or somebody else that has something to do with this. So in this case, we might make another account lookup. Right, we might do something like this. Um, we'll call it partner. We might make a field called partner. It's some, you know, another account that has to do with this opportunity that we want to track. And what we've done here is we've just created another one to n. So now we have two potential accounts related to this opportunity, which gives us a one to many here. And here we sort of have a one to many, right? We have an opportunity can have many accounts, but it's not really many. It's actually two. It's the two lookup fields. We have a one to two relationship specifically. The problem occurs when we need N to N, many unknown to many unknown. So we have one account can have as many opportunities as we want forever because of the relationship. We don't have to define any specific number. Same thing with contacts. I can have an account with one contact. I can have an account with 10,000 contacts. We don't care as long as each of those 10,000 contacts points to the same account. We have that one to N relationship. The big uh, thing that Salesforce provides out of the box is when we want to relate opportunities to contacts. Now, let's say at this account, we actually have 10,000 contacts, but we're only on any given opportunity dealing with two, three, four people at a time. So we don't want to have to say, okay, who are all the people that work for this company? and which ones am I dealing with on this opportunity? It should be really nicely organized over here. Now, if we have many opportunities over time with this account, we may have different people working on those deals or the same people working on those deals and any different combination of those things. That would create a many-to-many -many relationship between opportunities and contacts. Joe and Sarah might be contacts on this opportunity and the next one and the next one, but then, 
three other people might be working with this company on other opportunities. An opportunity could have many contacts playing a role, and many contacts, a contact, can play a role on many opportunities. So we have a true end-to-end -end relationship here. So just by creating a lookup from either a contact to opportunity wouldn't work. I could here, if I wanted to do, I could say on an on opportunity, maybe I can create three contact lookup fields. I can have it contact one, contact two, and contact three. That would only give me a one to or a, a three to one relationship or one to three relationship. I would have to have, what if I had four or five contact? Well, I don't want to add more fields just because of this situation. I want to work with data, not with schema on my day-to-day -day basis. So let's take a look at it the other way. The contact says which opportunity it's working on. So maybe now when I look at an opportunity, I say, well, I've got five contacts working on this one. Well, this also implies that a contact can never work on another opportunity. Again, we could try the same approach and put a few arrows going this way, indicating fields from contact to opportunity, but now this contact is restricted to only three opportunities. And this isn't three at a time, this is three all time. Because remember, sometimes we wanna see historical information. What opportunities did this contact work with us on? So we need a true end-to-end, -end, right? We want a many-to-many. -many. We want the fork to truly be on both sides, which means we don't have a lookup from either one of these. So the way we solve this is with a junction object, which is just a special type of object that we create or that Salesforce gives us out of the box that looks like this. It's a next, it's another object that creates a relationship to both things where you need that many to many. So here we have the opportunity, contact, role. And this object represents the relationship between these and it's going to have a look up to the opportunity and it's gonna have a look up to the contact. So this has two key fields here. So now I can have as many opportunity contact roles I want that point to a single opportunity and to different contacts. And I can have as many of these as I want that point to the same contact and as many opportunities. So we've created a true many to many relationship here. The other thing that this allows me to do is to define this relationship situationally. Maybe this contact was a primary, uh, a primary contact on this opportunity, but on the other one, it was just kind of a stakeholder. Maybe they play decision maker or gatekeeper roles on different deals. Um, so we get to say, well, when this contact was on this opportunity, they played this role. So the opportunity contact role has more than just these two lookup fields. It can also hold other attributes about the relationship. The role they played on the deal, were they the, are they or were they the primary contact? And now we have a true end-to-end -end relationship. So this is just one example of a junction object and specifically one that comes out of the box standard from Salesforce. We have a number of these around Salesforce. If you start to look around, we do have things called like account contact relationships. If you turn that on, if you wanted to do many to many from account to contact, that is not the default. This is the default. Um, some orgs come with that turned on. Um, we do have things on, um, on cases as well for tracking many-to-many -many relationships. But some of these things just come out of the box and you can find them around. Now there's nothing again in setup or anywhere in the system that's gonna call these things junction objects. They just are because they form a junction between two other objects by relating them. Remember, this third object, the junction object, has always has two lookup values. And very often, um, these are going to be master detail relationships relationships, not just normal lookups. Although two lookups technically makes a junction in that it creates a many-to-many -many relationship between these two things, usually we think of these as 
uh, a junction object is really requiring the parent. So just as a reminder, master detail relationships, the child cannot exist without the parent. And that's usually true on junction objects. We don't have opportunity contact roles without opportunities, and we certainly don't have them without contacts. So these would typically be two master detail relationships. You need both of these parents for this to make any sense. There were just, there's no need for this without either of these. So let's take a look now at how we might do this if we have another situation where we want to build a junction object. So let's say that uh, we are in real estate and we're doing property management. And our accounts are actually, let's say, condominium or rental complexes. And in those complexes, we're dealing with a number of vendors. So we may split our account record type up into customers and vendors. So anytime we add an account to Salesforce, they're either a customer account, like a, a rental property, or they're a vendor. They're a janitorial service, um, they're HVAC, they're landscaping, they're plowing. So we have maybe we have all these vendors in our system too. And what we're trying to do is match our customers to the vendors that they use for very specific services. So we have this account we know we have another account this is the same object I'm just drawing it in its own box so that we can separate the concepts out it's still the account object probably just with a different record type but we need some way to say this account deals with all of these vendors and all of these vendors can work on multiple properties. So let's say I have ABC Landscaping Company and they work on seven different properties, but each property is going to have you know, 10, 20 different vendors. Well, only one of them is for landscaping, but I have, like I said, all of these other services provided by a number of different vendors. So we need some kind of many-to-many. Uh, a, a real estate property can have as many vendors as we want them to have, and a vendor can work on as many properties as they are able to handle without any kind of fixed limit. So now we have this many-to-many -many relationship. However, we can't directly relate them each other, to each other because as we know, that always creates a one-to-many relationship. So what I would suggest is we're going to just take a little note here. We're gonna call this one the vendor. That will be our vendor record type. And this one will be our property record type. So we have this whole uh, table of vendors in our system. And now what I want to do is create a junction. So I'm going to call this a property vendor. And very often you'll see a naming convention just like this. When we create a junction object, it's, I don't want to go so hard as to say this is a best practice, but it's a helpful practice to give it a name that kind of represents what the junction is. The vendor is an account in its own right. We don't need to repeat this information. This vendor is a business. It's got an address. They've got a phone number. What we're trying to do is record purely relationship values here. We don't need to repeat all of this vendor information again in the property vendor object. The property vendor's goal is to relate it to the property. So each property will have many property vendors and each vendor will work on many properties potentially. So the property vendor now allows us to look from different angles and we can say, okay, this property has one to N many property vendors and this vendor, one to N to this relationship, works on many properties. Now, whether you call it a property vendor or a vendor property really doesn't matter. You have to pick one word, obviously, but I would pick the one that where you're going to reference it from the most. From the vendor's perspective, it's looking at here are all the properties I deal with. From the property's perspective, it's saying here's all the vendors that I work with. Now, the other thing, just like the opportunity contact role that we can do here is give additional information about the relationship 
in the junction object itself. So I might have a, another field here called say type or relationship type or service type. Uh, it might be a pick list and it'll be a selection of values, landscaping, legal, um, HVAC, cleaning services, all of these different types of things. And we're just going to say, yeah, this vendor is provides this type of service to this property and so on. And we can create as many property vendors as we want. We won't have these really without uh, the two parents, although you're probably not going to have two master detail relationships to the same object. One of these will be a standard lookup. That's okay. Uh, the goal is still the same. We're going to have this many to many relationship in here. And what this also helps us do is it helps us in our user interface. When we see a related lists, when we're looking at a property record and we look at a related list, we can name it vendors for this property. When we're looking at our account, uh, our vendor account, we have a related list also to the same object, but we can call it properties serviced or something like that. Um, the other benefit to having the master detail relationship in here is that you can actually pull values down from the parent into the related list, where with a normal lookup field, you can't do that without you know, creating an extra formula field or something like that in the child object. Um, but this is a huge advantage to using the master detail relationship also um, whenever you can possibly do that. So this is junction objects, how to create them. Remember, when you really need a many-to-many -many relationship, we want to avoid uh, things like pick lists and individual lookup fields between objects directly because that doesn't give us a true many-to-many. -many. This gives us a one to a fixed number. It might be a one-to-many or it might be a two-to-many or a three-to-many, but it's not a true many-to-many -many or an end-to-end -end relationship. Um, we want to do these things in a few different situations. Um, this is a good example because we don't know how many vendors are going to be at each property. This is a good example because we don't know how many contacts are going to work on each opportunity uh, true, you know, across the entire business operation. If it's always two and that's it, that's another thing. But remember, we want users to be able to scale um, without having to put in requests for more fields. Um, based on their individual use cases, we would like the systems to scale using data, not schema. So when we build our schema like this, users can scale out their operations uh, using data instead of schema and it will grow endlessly.